Stillness Dancing by J. Irwin Chapter 1 Two Months Earlier An ache pulsed from the base of his throat to the pit of his belly. Kareem, sitting against the wall of their home, waited to hear his fate from the men of the village. They will not take Anes aside. They cannot... The previous night's food sat in a hard lump in his stomach. The air burned in his chest. He pushed aside his future, leaving Beer al Hawa, his mother and sisters, alone, Nadia too. His father dead may be murdered. He refused to face the risk to his own life. I have no choice but to be strong. Only women can wail and collapse, at least for a time. Men must simply endure like the desert rocks. Karim had left the village many times, to earn money, to visit kin, to fish on the coast, but never before without a thin line of expectation to return. How can I bear to leave? No, they will not expel me. He heard, as if from a distance, his mother keening to the bitter dawn breeze. The rising sun had yet to peer from behind the shoulders of the valley. Karim's sisters, eyes thick-lidded from weeping, tended the fire and stole glances in his direction. Staring at the shifting grains of sand underneath the grimy rubber of his flip-flops, he retraced his steps to the beginning. It started easily, simply. He loved Nadia. He waited quiet and still at any rare gathering where she sat. Out of her father's line of sight, he would rather not die young and dishonoured. Sometimes he crouched downwind of her as if she were a nervous gazelle, watching to see what she laughed and smiled at, what she grimaced at, what scared her. Karim inherited his social standing from his father's spiritual role, as in the old ways, but that was not enough to impress Nadia's father and brother. They listened to cold, hard cash, and Karim had very little, even for a Bedou. He had followed a false trail. If only I hadn't been so blind. Idiot! I did not see it. He watched the grains of sand trickle from under his feet. Wood smoke drifted his way on the wind. The soft sounds of his sister's domesticity barely broke through his thoughts. Now I'm caught in the middle of drug smugglers and blood feuds, with bombs killing people all around. In Karim's disgrace, only the wise man Abu Dan spoke for him, while Anes and his allies hovered, ready to strike like a falcon on a rabbit. In revenge for a betrayal he didn't commit, Anes's son Tarek in an Israeli jail for drug smuggling. The men will not believe I betrayed Tarek. His mother's soft keening stopped. Karim hoisted his head as she rushed to straighten embroidered cushions. Abu Dan approached. His sisters turned to his mother to take charge. Set the water to reboil for tea and then leave us. The old man weaved his way around the jumble of rocks cleared from outside their home. The clutter of rugs, cushions and utensils outside, as personal as inside. His mother drew her black veil over her head, and his sister slipped inside the house. Abu Dhan beckoned, and Karim joined him beside the fire. The old man smelled of smoke and sage. Salam alaikum. Walaikum as salam, Karim rushed the greeting. What did they decide? I want you to do something for me. Abu Dan shockingly skipped the usual small talk. It will take you away for a while, but that, and then who knows? Allegiances change, power moves, you may be able to return. If you go now before you are expelled, or worse, there is a small possibility of return. Shock slammed through Karim's belly. The men believe Anes. He's bought them with his money. 
Not all of them, but enough. Leaving is your only option for now. Did you not tell them? Fight for me! Karim's anger blasted to ashes his respect for the old man. Abu Dam met Karim's glare, a wall of acceptance and love, despite the younger man's fury, the implied insult of cowardice. Karim breathed deep, went beneath the anger and found fear. I am sorry, Abu. Abu, father, a term of respect. His mother stole a glance, and he guessed she tried to gauge his response, whether his common sense would be stronger than his passion. She influenced him more than most of the tribe's mothers did their sons. He was different, like his father had been. He had been educated in Britain for a time. But old habits died hard, and she still doubted her sway. Karim shifted, softening out of the tension. How long will I be away? His mother released her breath slowly and quietly as she poured and passed round the tea. Ya Shakur! She muttered her thanks to Allah for his mercy, and a tear escaped down the deep crease beside her nose. The old man spoke. I do not know. It depends on what you find on this path. Nothing in life is certain. You know that as well as I. Abu Dan took sips of strong, sweet tea from the one glass without a chip in the side, the best Karim's mother could offer. The task might let you repair your reputation. I've done nothing wrong! Abu Dan took another sip of his tea and give you time to think about what is next for you. It will be hard, but that is life for the Bedou. He lifted one shoulder in acceptance. That is life for all when we step outside of our quiet inner self, letting normal pain and the fruitless attempts to avoid it transport us into suffering. One of Abu Dan's favourite teachings. Karim understood the concept, many did not. Karim dropped his head. The pain in his chest eased a little, but not his loathing of Anez. He turned to his mother, who nodded. It was enough. I have watched you over the last six seasons, said Abu Dan, and seen you stepping onto a different path, and I was unsure whether to intervene. Everyone's journey is their own to make. Sometimes it's unclear where the track leads. Sometimes the hardest paths lead to the sweetest wells. Karim knew the old man spoke the truth. I betrayed myself, my beliefs, to gain Anez's approval. His belly hollowed with shame. I gave up my place at your fire, the poems, the stories, the body meditations. I abandoned it all for a mirage. Karim shook his head. So what is the task? And I need to ask you some questions. He glanced towards his mother, who had moved away a little. About my father. I want you to work with Mohammed and his tourists again. He will pay you well. Abu Dan seemed to hesitate. I have a sense you need to be there. The old man shrugged. And now is not the time to talk about your father. Come and see me before you leave. For now, I will ensure you go unmolested. The old man stood. Ma'is salama. Karim watched Abu Dan's retreat past the jumbled mixture of buildings. He tried to soak up what he could as an antidote to despair. Stone houses now, instead of woolen tents, but decorated in the old ways. The homes in the very centre of the village were built into sandstone hummocks, shaped like the heart of the place. Children and goats clambered and jostled for position on top. He could see them from where he sat. The scratchy palm-frond awnings and windscreens of his people's desert origins rattled around him, Deep within, he held tight the Bedou certainty that the winds of turmoil would sweep across them again. Some day soon, Karim guessed, if the bombing of tourist resorts continued. The Bedou were fighting back. They might yet need the sanctuary of the desert narrows and tumbles. 
his breath caught as he gazed over the mosaic of his nomadic heritage. Flapping and fluttering at every turn, rugs, palm screens and veils. Gardens carved out of the rocky land thrived by the main well. Date palms had fruit trees for neighbours. Corn for the goats gave shade to the herbs for tea. Winter barley swayed heavily, ready for reaping. None of us are strangers to leaving my son. His mother, at his shoulder, spoke into his tearing pain to their people's history. Not only did the whims of fortune send them into the desert. Sand, rocks, caves and spirits called them too. Every so often one of them would wander into the shimmering heat haze, to return at some point or not. Whole families would set off with the basics for survival, loaded onto camels or the heads of the women, or even, in this modern age, piled onto the back of a four-by-four. Four. Everything else they would find along the way. The desert was their soul, forever tugging at them like the incessant wind. Even so, the thought of leaving Bir al-Halwa raked Karim's heart.